Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put out important news. And today it's not important news, it's record news for Q3. With us, Jay Hutton, he's the CEO of Visibility Group, trades in Canada under VSBY. For our friends in the US, VSBGF. And for our friends in Europe on Frankfurt under 5VS. For those who are new to the story, because you're seeing record revenues, record bookings, here's what you need to know. Visibility is the world leader in proactive digital display. What does that mean? They take traditional static digital displays that we all see, you know, in stores and places and or cameras uh, that you see in stores, arenas and stadiums. They add on their artificial intelligence, their machine learning and what that creates is real time advertising and security solutions, the likes of which the world has never seen. Now, if that sounds like lip service, because a lot of companies you know, talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk, here's what you need to know. They're already working with Intel and Taiwan-based ability enterprises to develop intelligent cameras for smart city applications. They're dealing with Sensormatic Solutions, who's a Johnson Controls company, uh, to provide new level of insights to help retailers make better business decisions. Embera, that's the one I love, the world's number one commercial refrigeration manufacturer uh, to market, manufacture, innovative video technology on new and existing coolers and freezers. It's unbelievable. But of course, the one flagship deal that everybody knows or needs to know about is their major deal with Grupo Modelo, which is part of the AB InBev family of companies. That's Anheuser-Busch to install and manage an international in-store media network of up to 50,000 stores in Mexico and across Latin America by 2024. Let's talk about the record revenue, record quarter. Jay, welcome back. Good morning. Uh, before we get into the details of the quarter, all right, this is, the, this is a record quarter on all fronts. Mm. How good should shareholders be feeling right now, including you, because you're obviously a big shareholder? Well, let me speak uh, uh, as a, for a moment as a shareholder then. Uh, I'm excited because we all, I mean, for me, this is year five, maybe almost six of this venture. And um, both as investors, as an entrepreneurs, we, we look for and um, closely monitor the point at which a company will inflect. And you, you don't, as an investor, uh, you don't want to be too early. And you certainly don't want to be too late. I happen to think it's more expensive to be too late, but that's a different conversation for a different time. Um, you want to be right on time, right? And you, and you want to be at the point at which they inflect. And if you're doing this properly, you're investing in a company that is inflecting inside an industry that's inflecting. Yeah. And so you've got sort of a double, you've got a multiplier. So here's the visibility story from my perspective. And I appreciate I'm biased, but I'm disclosing that bias at this moment. So we're, we're in a, we're, this company is a pioneer in the proactive digital display category. And as that has evolved, we've remained a leader in that category. So we're inflecting as an organization as a consequence of that leadership, but also as a consequence of the marketplace uh, exploding at the moment. So the two marketplaces, so here's the point, inflecting company, inflecting market one store is media, and inflecting market to security. So we've got this It's like triumvirate. a chain reaction of explosions. It really yes. is. Yes, and it's a challenge for sure, because um, as an operations guy in my core, you might equally uh, define me as a, a sales guy as well. I do enjoy the deal, so I love to get involved in the deal. But the truth is um, the entire focus of the organization right now, as I think I've told you before, is on execution. Um, and the yield of that execution, what it looks like on the balance sheet is interesting because it's, it's incremental. It's an inverted pyramid. It starts with a one, it goes to two, goes to four, goes to eight, goes to 16. That's the way software as a service builds. And it requires a little bit of patience. I don't land a deal for $40 million and book and bill of $40 million. What I want people to start looking at is the increasing bookings cadence coupled by the increasing revenue cadence. If there's a discord between the two, we have a problem, but there well, isn't. Let's, well, let's look at the numbers specifically then and let's, let's break that down a little bit. So revenue, that's the easy one for all investors to understand, was 525,000, I'm, I'm rounding, $525,000 US for the quarter, which is great, that's a record. But bookings for the quarter also 
were $4.5 million US. So you talk about that's a book to revenue ratio of over eight to one. Talk about, we've now we've spoken about that before, but you're constantly bringing on new shareholders and even existing shareholders need to be reminded of it. Why is that a healthy leading indicator of the company's revenue growth potential? I'm glad you used that phrase, leading indicator, because that's precisely what it is. A, an entry gets into a bookings category by, by being the culmination of the total contract value of the contract signed. So if we sign a contract for 36 months for $10 a month, the TCV is 10 times 36. We put that in our bookings. When that contract is deployed and the way software as a service works in terms of software revenue recognition, US GAAP, IFRS, we recognize that revenue when it's delivered. So the camera has gone through the, the month of May with a camera license. At the end of the month of May, we get to recognize that one camera as a license. So as long as you have increasing bookings cadence, coupled by maybe not blow by blow, you know, item by item, you know, follow along delivery on the revenue side, but as long as you have you know, a decent ratio, that's a healthy company. Yeah, and, and bookings and, and bookings at some point, if everything's going well, that ratio will keep growing. Because if you if you score a $10 million contract with Georgecom tomorrow uh, for the next two years, that's going to go right into bookings. But it's not going to go right into revenue because only a small portion of that, you divide it by two years and only a small portion of that goes in. The, the kicker for us, and this is particularly irrelevant in our cooler business. Um, in our cooler business, we've taken on the responsibility of providing under a single purchase order, a single contract, the hardware and the software. It's an integrated solution. It's fully coupled. This is the work we're doing with Embera, which I'm happy to talk about a bit more if you want me to. Yeah, um, because I love that one. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that, because you're a beer drinker, maybe that's why. Yeah. The, the, uh, that deal is different than the other deals. It has a software as a service component to it. So it has that dynamic of, uh, of bookings revenue versus rev uh, sorry booking cadence versus revenue but it also has a unique one-time component so when the product the actual physical product ships out of the of the factory right at a 35 or 40 percent margin um that gets recognized as revenue and then these the software as a service license at an 85 to 90 percent margin gets recognized uh on a month-to-month -month basis month so you have month. both an initial bump you know both that initial hit and then the ongoing hit. Bottom line is right now, we know that there's $4.5 million in booking just for the quarter. And that's revenue that's going to come into the company at some point. That's the easiest way for investors to understand that. You now right. know that that revenue has been booked and it's going to come in at some point, depending on what the contract is, whether if it's with George Com for a year, you slice up in 12, if it's for two years, you slice up in 24, but it's coming. The other part that I really like, Jay, is that you say, quote, further encouraging is that Q4 revenue is already considerably ahead of Q3 results, and we're anticipating a strong finish to this calendar year. It, how good is Q4 a, looking? I know you can't be specific, but how happy are you well, with how Q4 is going? I would say that uh, another potential record is in our future. Uh, I feel comfortable saying that. Um, and, um, you know, with four weeks remaining in the quarter, uh, uh, I don't know where that number is going to finish, but even if we finish now, it would be at a place we've never been before. Oh, <laughs> okay. That's great. Uh, that, that, that's, and we're December, by the way, we're December 2nd right now. So, yeah, you know, and so you... here's the, I'm in, I'm in Mexico city right now and I've been doing a bunch of things, but one of the things I was doing is uh, on Tuesday, I think it's Tuesday. I went to Embera, uh, which is about a, an hour and a half North of the city. That's their largest factory. They have multiple factories, but this happens to be the largest one. It's 45,000 square meters, George. That's about 500,000 square fact, feet. That's about 500,000 square feet. It, it's enormous. And actually, and for, to put that in perspective for everybody, that's about 12 acres. That's 10 to 12 acres. It's enormous. We were, driving, we were driving around in golf carts yeah. with COVID masks. And <laughs> it's an it's a animation. Uh, but the, the point is that particular factory ships 40,000 coolers a month from that factory. And so part of what I'm doing is we're working on our next level commercial engagement with them, which is 
really important to us and you know, very strategic. But partly I was pleading that some of the orders that we've got into the system can ship by New Year's. <laughs> so, so that we can, I'm trying to plead so that, hey, can we jump the queue on a few of these orders? Because in the fourth quarter, I think one of the most noteworthy things that a lot of investors, especially guys like you that are following this Embera deal, they want us, us to start locking in some of that business. This fourth quarter will be our largest revenue component for the cooler. And I'm now, I'm now pleading so that I can take it out of the bookings backlog, right? And move it into their revenue backlog. It's a meaning, it's a meaningful piece, right? Well, look, even but the most look, most uh, you know, smart shareholders, not smart, everybody who's 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 long and really excited about the company. I'm okay if it's in bookings, say the truth, because I know it's gonna come, but I hear you as to why you want. But if it's in bookings and it's great. By the way, I just want to touch on that because a lot of people we haven't spoken about Embera in a while, so they're probably wondering what's this Embera thing. So I want to tell people Embera is the world's number one commercial refrigeration manufacturer. So when you walk into convenience stores, uh, gas stations, uh, grocery stores, you see those big coolers that have either you know the the frozen or the refrigerated. Right now, all we're seeing, guys, is just big glass windows. And typically what you see, if there's any marketing on those, is some stickers on them. So uh, you'll see buy George Co. ice cream or buy George Co. you know, juices or whatever. That's it. What you're doing, Jay, is you're going to turn those those windows, for lack of a better term, uh, into active digital displays, right? Transparent LCD. So you can display on it in HD or 4K video. But you can also see through it, George. One of right. the problems with the stickers Correct. is it drives the packaging people bananas because, wait a minute, we spent $40 million on packaging for that new energy drink, and now you're putting a sticker over it? Are you Have you gone crazy? So the idea of driving promotion and advertising in retail in a dynamic and video-based way, that's the breakthrough. So what's the status of that relationship with Embera? Because I think that's ingenious. That's the one that most makes me think about Tom Cruise in Minority Report, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And where, what's the status of Embera right now? So we have an agreement, a teaming agreement that we signed several months ago and announced. I think it might've been in the springtime. And we're leveling up that agreement at the moment. I'm not going to provide details as to what that's going to look like, but um, you could expect that uh, Embera will have a branded Embera product, which in incorporates our technology. And you can expect a multi-year relationship uh, that is global in nature uh, for us to build our technology into their product and their, uh, to sell it and for them to sell it as well. That, okay, that's great news because, and I can't wait to see that uh, at a store near me. Um, let's talk about a bit, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I always want to make sure we cover everything. Uh, this quarter, sometimes investors forget, they see a press release, they say, here's our results for the quarter. And they think it's right now, right? They forget that Q3 ended June 30th. Right. So essentially five and a half, you know, five plus months ago. Right. So in the in the press release, you mentioned the level of deployments as of June 30th. And that concerns some people because I think they forget that, hey, it's not even though we put the press release out a couple of days ago, that's not the number as of a couple of days ago. That's back. Well, that's the number. Looking. Just Q3 ended September 30, not June 30. Just to oh, sorry. correct yeah, sorry. it. Yeah. yeah. But but it still is a rear view mirror <laughs> point of view. Right. And it's frustrating a little bit as a C, as a CEO that is uh, that drives revenue through SaaS. You have to be patient. It's the inverted it's the inverted pyramid thing. One goes to two, goes to four, goes to eight. That's the whole. That's that's the nature of the business. Now we've got the benefit of having a couple of our components of our solutions that 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 are that ship in a box, and therefore it becomes it becomes revenue recognition immediately. Uh, but yes, the frustration is it that it's it is rearview mirror, and um, I want to correct a little bit of the concerns or at least address a little bit of the concerns. In the third quarter, we were in the middle of ramp, well, diminishing our role in the installation cadence of the Modella Raman network and, and training or on-ramping Tech Mahendra, our scale partner, right? And if anybody uh, has in, been involved in a, uh, in a rehabilitation or reconstruction of a home, you know, it's 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 like threading the needle every day. You can't have the drywallers show up before the electricians. The electricians got to show up before the drywallers. And if that cadence is wrong, so the complexity of this network is enormous. This speaks to the reason why we have a very large 
20 billion dollar company as our partner but training them up is a large task multiple teams multiple countries um, in order for us to meet our revenue objectives and our deployment cadence targets we have to have multiple teams in mexico we have to have multiple teams in ecuador peru and colombia respectively so that training process is lengthy and involved but once they're trained it's fire and forget you know you're a you, you can get to 100 and 150 stores a week just in mexico not to mention the other countries when you have them up to speed so even though it could be easily uh, judged that we're falling behind our trajectories and, and projections and targets uh, I, I, that's an enormous company that has the ability to accelerate and accelerate fast i can tell you this shareholders will not be disappointed uh, where uh, on where we will be by the end of the year all right so yeah because a lot of because a lot of people are focusing on that uh 5, installation numbers by the end of the year this is a backwards looking you know that's a backwards looking number that you put in, in q3 are you able to provide specific are you able to is there is there, is, is there a reason why you can't say george we're at here's the number we got right now this is a challenge uh, i have a very large dominant partner uh anheuser-busch ab InBev, and um they view what they're doing to be transformative they view it to be highly competitively uh differentiated and they're in a highly competitive marketplace where they're not the number one player they're in the number two player so and i'm talking about convenience store the number one is oxo so what they've asked me to do is just not talk about deployment cadence and there was a time in 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 our organization where we'd be doing business with smaller companies where we'd be able to have that negotiation there's no concept of negotiation with these guys you know you, you i don't want to risk any negative vibe in the relationship i just need to uh follow the protocols and understand that in the fullness of time this will be as uh, as fully disclosed as it needs to be yeah and i think that's important because like i've been doing this for 24 and three quarters years all right so 25 is going to be in april and one thing i uh, i can echo for everybody is it's different if jay and george so visibility and uh george calm have a deal we're both smaller you know companies we can talk about that stuff all the hell we can give a monthly update if we want say hey, jay you know we're up to this many installations with george calm let's put that number up you are you good yeah boom put out a press release and away it goes but for lack of a better term, the great news is that visibility is in the NFL now, right? It's a, the saying, you know, you're, you're playing in the big leagues and the disclosure, you know, the amount of disclosure is just different there, especially when it's, especially when it's something brand new like this cutting edge, they want to get the competitive edge on everybody. They have no, they're multi-billion dollar enterprise. They have no incentive at all to tell the world how this is going right now because they, they want to keep their success under wraps, right, Jay? So you have to they have, go along they have, with that. They have one incentive. Well, one principal incentive. Uh, and I, here I'm in Mexico. I spent all day in a strategy meeting with them. We're talking about next level. We're talking about new deals, uh, you know, new momentum. And the one incentive, which I have to be careful about how I present to them, is that they have an option to buy up to 19... Uh, 9.9% of the company for, for just under $14 million. And um, options that they've earned, warrants that they've earned already are significantly in the money. So the only benefit to them when I provide rapid and completely transparent disclosure is their equity. So I remind them that if I'm allowed to be more disclosive, the market will more fully appreciate what we're doing and they will benefit. I can tell you that that, that that conversation has certain gravitas now with three of the many mile, three of the multiple milestones connected to warrants have already been earned out. It'll have more impact when they've earned out more. Uh, so I suspect over time, there'll be greater and greater and greater transparency with this because now they have a significant benefit that they can point to that today is in the many millions of dollars in terms of upside to them. So it, 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 the materiality for visibility is a much lower bar than the materiality for AB InBev, but we're now approaching something that is strategic to them and they see the value and I would expect more. There's a plan to do something more disclosive and more transparent. 
around the NRF, which is January 16th, National Retail Federation show in New York City right. on January 16th. And, um, you know, shareholders never are never, it never happens at the pace that we all want it to happen. I'm including myself, but it will happen. I got to tell you, I'm happy with the pace. I, I'm going to say that because I, maybe I have a better understanding of how these things deploy, but, but I'm happy. But the most important takeaway from all this, Jay, is that when the time comes and you can disclose, shareholders will not be disappointed with where the company is. I where. think that's true. I think that's true. Yeah. All right. That's great. So that's, and that's good. And that's good to, that's good to address that. I also want to talk about a little bit about your quote, which says the following, we are especially excited at the vast growth and, and profit potential of our store as a medium program, which enables uh, us to partner with major firms, brands, and developing a new advertising revenue for large and small retailers. Uh, we're helping to reinvent brick and mortar retail as its power increasingly recognized by both brands and retailers. This sounds like uh, the store is a medium program is gaining more and more traction. Is that what you're trying yeah. to tell us there? That it, yeah. You know, what's the level of interest that's coming in? Off the chain. Uh, 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 ridiculous. Let me give you an insight as to why <laughs> it's meaningful. Let me tell you why it's meaningful. And I'm not trying to be cryptic. I'm just trying to be compliant. Um, and I don't want to blow up anything in, in, in flight at the moment. That would be, be foolish. Nobody would want me to do that. If you, look at, if you look at the store as a media, what actually is it? And we're now deployed in Latin America, as I think you know. Um, we now have a very viable and tangible network. It's being purchased by advertisers right now. Don't forget that in the Modellarama deal, we have license revenue and we have one third of the media revenue. And we rarely talk about the, that. We rarely talk the about that. One third of the media, yes, the one third of the media revenue eclipses the license revenue by orders of magnitude. So not so, just eclipses, but <laughs> destroys it. It destroys it. It's history. I mean, for us, it's a stopgap. It's a defensive posture. We will make no less than X, <laughs> right? But but the the media, which is now being sold and now has significant partners the largest media company in Mexico as one that's right on the, on the step of beginning to deploy this technology, use the technology for deploying their technology, uh, their advertising, it, it is delivering in spades. Uh, but let me tell you the reason why this is so disruptive. When our, you know, the joint venture has its own management team. They have sales, they have CEO, they have operations, they have all those pieces. The sales side has been working hard to deal directly with big brands. Think of the biggest brands you know, Coca-Cola, PepsiCo. In Latin America, we have Beanbow, which is a snacks and confectionery, Hershey's, Mars. We all know who they are. And the, 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 the engagement modality is, hey, George, you're the brand guy at, um, at Coca-Cola. We've got this network. We'd like you to buy a big chunk of this network. Um, and that's, today, that's been proven to be quite successful. And as the network grows, that revenue component will grow with it because it's like you, you buy revenue per location. But here's why it's really important. That call to that brand actually bypasses the agency. The agency places the media. Agencies have legions of people doing media buying. They take a, they take a, a budget from Unilever for $800 billion and they carve it up. This much in print, this much in broadcast, this much in out of home, et cetera. This much on the internet. We're not going to the agencies to sell them this network. We're going directly to the brands. And the agencies are terrified of our success. Because if we're successful in getting brands to buy direct media on our network, the, the agency is now disintermediated. They're out of the mix. So the response, you don't want that to happen, though. The, no, the but we want... We want them to be frightened by the possibility so they want their so they attention. Act. Right. We want their attention. And now they're acting. I, I've got to be cryptic, but to us, that's the very next thing. A very significant relationship with a large media agency that, among other things, aligns with us to build these networks globally. That's what we're seeking. That to us is a target. So if the of the three constituents right now, being the agencies, the brands, or the retailers. It's the agencies, the media companies that are showing the greatest level of interest right now. Is that is that and, and not, not, to, not to diminish the other ones, but are they the ones that are pushing the hardest? I, I don't know about interest, but they have the most existential threat. 
because uh, if the Unilever brand budget is controlled by a 35 year old in New York, and this is how it rolls, <laughs> a $500 million brand budget, um, and I've gone directly to Unilever to get Unilever to buy media on my little network, that media buyer is now looking to ways to justify his or her existence and the budget that they consume. Instead, they would rather deal with us directly and buy the media on behalf of their client so they can margin it, so they can make money off of it, so they can put it in, part, in, in a strategic portfolio of ad properties. This is the conversation. I know it sounds like a little bit inside baseball, but this is a really uh, interesting and disruptive time because of that. Bottom line is people are loving the store as a medium program. They see the future of it and they know it's not, they know that, and the amazing is they see this as a brand, a brand new channel. It's like, it's almost like creating television. Is it, I correct me if I'm wrong and maybe I'm overstating it. If I am, tell me, but you know, when television was created, I have to imagine advertisers went crazy because that we've never reached people like this ever. It's massive and it's, it's explosive. Is that what stores and medium is shaping up to be yes. also? Because that's how I see it. If you were to take television, a broadcast media, picture me going to a million homes and made it a narrow cast medium where it's going directly to George for meaningful impressions delivered right. to George at the point where George can buy that which is being promoted. That's the analogy. So you can see, even though the, they're both advertising mediums, one is vastly better than the other, right? Yeah, television was a shotgun. Stores of medium is precision Laser. point rifle. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so it's, it's almost like my television. So to put it in perspective for everybody, it's, it would be equivalent to the power right now. My television, my Samsung TV is hanging at home right now, knows that at this moment, it's George and his sons watching the Dallas Cowboys. So we'll serve him a different ad. But tonight, it's my wife and my daughter and uh, and uh, her her aunt who are watching something else. Yeah, customizing. That's how powerful stores and media. Yeah, and, and at the same time, gathering up your daughter and your wife's response to the advertisement. So it's it's a two way medium now. It's not just one way. So, so it's, a, it's a really important and disruptive inflection. And the, and the, the impact it's going to have on, on, on the store, I mean, Boston Consulting Group in July of this year said it would be, would be a $100 billion business in three years. But basically nothing today. $100 billion in three years. And visibility is sitting at the tip of the spear. Oh, and I said in the beginning, uh, we're sitting on top of these three markets. The company is inflecting. The market is inflecting. Footnote, BCG says 100 billion in three years, right? It, 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 that's what's going on here. And of course, the security market, which is going to be uh, just over 300 billion by the end of 23 at a 10% compound growth rate. And we don't even talk about that. It's That's the amazing, that's the amazing part about this whole story. Well, that the, the problem is in, I speak about it. I worry about it. I sweat about it. Uh, I, I get excited by it. And we've got enormous progress. In the fourth quarter, two of our biggest deals will be in the security space. Uh, so uh, we're continuing to execute there as well. Bottom line, Jay, and we're getting it off like this. Has the company ever been in a better condition on all fronts than it is today? Not in my time here, and I'm a founder, so. And I think, by the way, people don't know this, but we're I'm in you're in Mexico, I'm in California. To show how busy you are, this interview is taking place at 745 in the morning, right? Just in the early showered. Just, just an indication <laughs> of what your, you know, what, what your days are like, but congratulations Thank you, George. Jay, on a Q3. But I think what's important, the, I think the important takeaway for me, for everybody is congratulations on the Q3, but that was September 30th. <laughs> There's congratulations on what's happened since then. And what sounds like is going to happen. Can I ask you this final question? You think you'll be back on Agoracom in December? Uh, yes, for sure. All right. Then that tells me everything. Can't wait. But in the meantime, Thanks so much. And I can say this on behalf of all shareholders, the fact that you take out the time, I know how busy I am running a Gorecom. So I've got to think you're at a factor of 10 X of that. No, I appreciate so I don't know the how time. you make time for these things, but the fact that you do for the benefit of shareholders to bring context, that's why we call it beyond the press release. Jay is amazing. And I think I speak on behalf of everyone when I say thanks for doing that. Okay, George. Thank you. For everybody at home, you've been watching or you've been listening by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcast platform. 
to Jay Hutton. He's CEO of Visibility Group Technologies, trades in Canada under VSBY, VSBGF for our friends in the U.S., and 5VS for our friends in Europe. For those who are new to the story, because you saw the record numbers, two ways to do your due diligence, because we know that this is both a cutting-edge story into an explosive market, but it's also a new market, which means a lot of you still need to really understand what this is. Get to the profile page on Agoracom. We've got a nice summary, a good 1,000-foot view of this story and the success around it. And once you understand that, then click over right to the visibility website, do your deep dive due diligence. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. See you next time. Thank you, George. Hey guys, the video's over, but don't forget to help your company by liking it and even leaving a comment below. And then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our YouTube channel so you never miss another great Agoracom small cap video.